Today we are here to talk about rabbits. Rabbits are one of those fundamental woodworking joints that you just can't get too far without knowing how to execute. They come in really handy. So I've used rabbits extensively in a project I'm working on right now with the nightstands and chest of drawers where the panels for the top, the sides, the back are made out of solid wood and they have to go into a groove. So in order to make everything fit and look the way I need it to look, we cut a rabbit around the perimeter. Now this is just one of my test pieces so it's kind of jacked up a little bit but you can see what the rabbit is. It's just a groove essentially or a dado if you're going across the grain uh, that is on the edge, right? So it goes all the way to the edge and creates this little lip. And then this quarter inch lip can go into a quarter inch groove, all right? And that's exactly what I have back here on this nightstand project. So the top and the sides, here, let me bring it over there. From this view, this is the back, but the side and top look the same. All you see is a nice flat panel, right? And it's all solid wood. So you might be wondering what's going on movement wise well, that's where the rabbit comes in. So what you're seeing is this side of the panel. Okay, the rabbited side faces the inside. And it's been cut in such a way, top to bottom, we're not so worried, right? It's across the grain this way where we have movement issues. So the panel has been cut short by an eighth of an inch to allow movement on both sides. And then I just cut a three eighths rabbit in both sides, which also has a little bit of a gap. So if you look inside the cabinet, you would see a little bit of gap between the leg and this part of the rabbit here. So that's just one use for a rabbit. But if you think in terms of just basic carcass construction for kitchen cabinets or like my shop cabinets here, you'll find rabbits really handy for, let's say, cabinet sides. How do you get that top to sit on there? Well, you don't want to just drop the top in and do a butt joint, right? You could put a rabbit into the top of that side piece and drop that top of the cabinet right into the rabbit. And then you could either, you know, drive a couple screws or just use glue alone a lot of times uh, to seal that thing in there. So the rabbit is a fundamental joint. So it's important to know how to make one. Now you can make them a lot of different ways. You could use your router. You could use the table saw several ways at the table saw alone. Uh, you can use a rabbiting bit, which is a bearing guided little doohickey that will create uh, this sort of edge treatment on there. So um, tons of ways to do it. My favorite way is to use the table saw. And if any of you have read the book, Hybrid Woodworking, which I have right here, I uh, cover this as well as uh, grooves and dados um, in detail here. This might be something you want to check out. Uh, but it's a cool technique where you can do the bulk of the work at a power tool and then we come back to the workbench to finesse it to fit and get the perfect fit. So what I have in the table saw is a dado stack. This is one of those tools that basically if you have a table saw you kind of can't do without it. It really makes it a lot more versatile. Um, but basically it's a bunch of saw blades stacked together in a sandwich that allows you to cut nice wide pieces instead of just a single blade width. All right, And I've got it for about three quarters of an inch here to give me the rabbit that I'm looking for. Now, here's the key to making this cut. Do you see this little fence that I have here? This is a sacrificial surface. And what I mean by that is we're actually gonna cut into it intentionally. Right? A lot of times you make a new fence, you don't wanna cut into it. But this is one that I can use specifically for this task. Now, this is a really nice piece of like laminated uh, material here. You don't need to have something that fancy. A simple piece of plywood clamped to your regular fence would work just fine. A two by four that's been jointed and planed so that you know it's nice and straight. You can use that too because here's the thing. You're gonna start with the blade low and then you're gonna bring the fence over so it's just over the blade. The goal is to actually bury the blade into the fence and that's what's gonna allow us to get our cut right up to the edge of the workpiece. So when I run a workpiece across, I should be able to get that rabbit right on the edge. It'll be nice and clean. Yeah, I do recommend that you use some sort of push block here. And the reason is because when you're removing this much material, the momentum and the sheer force of that blade wants to cause it to lift. And it can do that at the front of the cut, at the back of the cut, in the middle of the cut. So by using a push paddle or the gripper, uh, you can actually apply a good even amount of weight and pressure, hopefully giving you a nice consistent rabbit. The thing is though, 
the, the nature of these things. Not all your work pieces are this small, so you may not be able to control it as well. You may have a bigger piece or a piece of plywood or something uh, that has a little bit of a bow in it. So you may actually end up with a slightly inconsistent rabbit. And that's where the hand tools come in. So let's head back to the workbench. So let me show you the two tools that I like to use for making the adjustments here. Uh, first is a router plane. This is one of my absolute favorites. If you are a power tool enthusiast, this is probably the hand tool that you're gonna relate to the best, right? Because you have the blade protruding out of the bottom of this plane, as you run it across the surface, it's at a fixed location, right? So it works a lot like a regular router. You can kind of understand what this thing is doing. And unless you tilt it in some whacked out way, you kind of can't cut too far, all right? That's the great thing about it. It's a very consistent uh, and easy to understand tool. This is the other tool I like to use. This is my shoulder plane. And this guy is pretty unique in that the blade goes all the way to the edges here which a lot of planes, the blade is gonna stop inside the body of the plane. But the key is this one will allow me go right up to this edge, which is critical for something like a rabbit, right? If it stopped any sooner, then you'd have a ridge at the end, which isn't gonna be very helpful. So which one do you use? Well, I should mention that this, we would have intentionally cut this thing just a bit shy, so that if the workpiece lifted up, we'd have a little bit of extra material to remove. And at the very least, we take one complete pass or two complete passes to get this thing to fit into our groove. I like to be cautious when it comes to this stuff instead of going, trying to get right to the number then overshooting, right? So we'll just put it into the bench. Important thing here is you really only need to stop at the front, but I bring the back dog in just to support it. I don't crank this thing down because if you crank it down, you create a bow here and that makes it difficult to plane, right? So just a little bit of pressure to immobilize it, hold it in place. So we can use this shoulder plane to do the work, and I'll just make a quick cut here. Now these can be a little tricky to balance because it is kind of an odd shaped plane, right? So it takes a little getting used to. The thing about this is it will take some of those high spots and knock them down if you know where the high spots are. So you might just take your groove uh, put it on there and try to spot where the high spots are and you go, oh, it's a little thick right here. I can't get the, the work piece to go on. So let me just work this area here and you can clean that spot up. The thing that this doesn't do is it doesn't make sure that we have an even depth all the way across. And that's what the router plane is really good at doing. So that's where you might consider using this one. So let's uh, intentionally induce a bit of a taper here. Right, so I've got a little bit more material removed on this side than I do on this side. Well, the router plane is gonna help me find that, even if I didn't know it was there. So if I'm set here, I don't know for sure at this point, I mean, I do because I just did it, but you might normally not know if this is the lowest point. But you basically set it to that point and then move it along the surface and see if it starts to catch. And you can kind of move along and find all the places it starts to grab, you know you may have had the lowest point. If I start over here and go to this side, I'm gonna see a gap. So it should be pretty obvious when, uh, when I'm at the low point. All right, so putting pressure on the right side, my left hand is just kind of helping me move it forward, but all the downward pressure is on the right, otherwise I tip. I'm just pushing forward and I start to see the blade catching. There we go, look at that. You see, so there was a bit of a high point in the middle. So if I wanted to, I could then loosen it up, bring it down a little bit more, repeat. Didn't take very much off, there we go. Now it's going all the way across. Okay, so what's great about this is it's going to ensure that the depth of this rabbit is even all the way across. But I do find that I get better, smoother results with the shoulder plane, so you know, if I even it out and then maybe take one more pass, I get a nice shaving off of there and this is nice and smooth. So you're not really doing a whole lot of work to this board. If you are, then you gotta adjust your table saw to make a deeper cut. The goal is not to work more for the sake of using hand tools, it's to use the hand tools quickly and make one or two passes to get this guy to fit perfectly and you just sweeten the fit. You're not looking to do a ton of extra work.
Either one of these tools will do the job, but you can see fundamentally they work differently. So this guy, the router plane, is going to help me fix some problems. Uh, this one will help me fix them too, but I got to know a little bit more about that surface before I use it because I might make the problem a little bit worse if I'm not, too, uh, if I'm not careful enough with it. Uh, but this for me is a very quick way to end up with, uh, with really a precise perfect fit. Now I'll tell you what, if I just go power tools and I don't do this, Typically what I wind up having to do is raise the blade a little bit so that all of my rabbits fit in the grooves. What that inevitably does is it results in some of those rabbits not fitting quite as snug as I want them to. Um, a lot of folks you know, question whether or not incorporating hand tools is worthwhile because they see the hand tools as being very slow. Uh, but the reality is if it's done properly, you start to find the places where your power tools can let you down. And sometimes it's just the pure physics of the situation um, that result in a joint that's not completely consistent. But man, those hand tools can bail you out of those situations. And I gotta say, there is something fun about taking some nice sweet shavings off, getting the absolute perfect dialed in fit, and just knowing that it's, it's, you're at the sweet spot. You know, and sometimes with a power tool, you, you may find a sweet spot, but you also may go right past it. <laughs> you know, that's the problem with power tools. So, uh, so yeah, that's the basics of creating rabbits, the hybrid style.